Hello, I'm Professor Von Schmohawk, and welcome to Why You. In the last lecture, we saw how linear equations can be applied to real-world applications. These equations express mathematical relationships between numeric quantities. For example, the relationship between the level of water in a pool and time. Many real-world quantities can be calculated using formulas, which relate two or more quantities. For example, we can calculate the perimeter of a rectangle by adding twice its length to twice its width. This formula relates three quantities, perimeter, length, and width. Instead of using words to represent these quantities, we can write this more compactly using letters like P, L, and W. Formulas for calculating the value of one unknown quantity from one or more other quantities whose values are known are sometimes called literal equations. The word literal refers to the fact that when calculating the unknown quantity, variables in the formula are replaced by the actual or literal values corresponding to a specific case of the relationship. Literal equations can involve more than three variables. For example, the formula for calculating the volume of a rectangular box, otherwise known as a rectangular prism, is V equals L times W times H. In this equation, there are four variables, which are V, which represents the volume of the box, and L, W, and H, which represent its length, width, and height. Likewise, literal equations may involve only two variables, as in the formula to convert temperature in degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. In this formula, the variables are C, which represents the temperature in degrees Celsius, and F, whose value is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. The value of any variable in a formula can be calculated given known values for the other variables. Therefore, it is often desirable to rearrange the formula so that the variable whose value we wish to calculate is alone on the left side of the equation. For example, we could rewrite this formula to calculate degrees Celsius given a known temperature in Fahrenheit. To calculate degrees Celsius, it is desirable to rearrange the formula so that C is alone on the left side. The first step is to isolate the term containing C on one side of the equation by moving all the terms which do not contain C to the other side. Subtracting 32 from both sides of the equation allows us to eliminate the 32 on the right side. We say that the terms 32 and negative 32 cancel since together they equal zero. Eliminating these terms on the right accomplishes our goal of isolating the term containing C. Since we want to end up with the variable C alone on one side, we must also eliminate the 9 fifths multiplier. We can do this by multiplying both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 9 fifths, which is 5 ninths. Since anything times its reciprocal is 1, 5 ninths times 9 fifths can be replaced by 1. And 1 times C is just C. Swapping the two sides of the equation, we now have a formula which calculates the value in degrees Celsius for a temperature given in degrees Fahrenheit. Another example is to rearrange the formula for calculating the perimeter P of a rectangle given its length and width to create a formula for calculating the length L given the perimeter and width. Just as before, we want to rearrange the formula so that the variable whose value we are calculating is alone on the left side. We start by subtracting the term 2W from both sides of the equation. This allows us to cancel the 2W term on the right, leaving only the term 2L. 
Since we want L alone on one side, we must eliminate the multiplier 2. This can be accomplished by dividing both sides of the equation by 2. Since identical factors in the numerator and denominator of a fraction can be cancelled, we can cancel the 2's in the top and bottom of the fraction on the right, leaving only L. Swapping the two sides of the equation, we have a formula which calculates the rectangle's length L, given known values for its perimeter and width. Let's say that we are given a formula A equals B over 2C and are asked to solve this equation for C given known values for A and B. To solve for C, we want to rearrange the equation with C alone on the left side. To rearrange the equation so that C is alone on the left, we must first move C out from the denominator of the fraction. We can do this by multiplying both sides of the equation by C. Multiplying the fraction on the right by C is the same as multiplying the fraction's numerator by C. We can then cancel the C's in the numerator and denominator. We must now eliminate the variable A on the left so that we end up with C alone on the left side. To do this, we divide both sides of the equation by A. The A's in the numerator and denominator on the left then cancel, leaving C alone on the left. We can simplify the complex fraction on the right, since dividing the fraction B over 2 in the numerator by A is the same as multiplying B over 2 by the reciprocal of A, which is 1 over A. Multiplying the numerators and denominators of the two fractions gives us b over 2a. Since this equation now contains the variable c alone on the left side, we have solved the equation for c. As another example, let's start with a similar equation, except with an additional term on the right side, and solve for the variable a. To rearrange the equation so that a is alone on the left side, we start by subtracting the term 5d from both sides of the equation, which allows us to cancel the 5d term on the right. Since we want the variable a alone on the left, we need to move a out from the denominator of the fraction on the right. To do this, we multiply both sides of the equation by a. Just as in the previous example, multiplying this fraction by a is the same as multiplying its numerator by a. We can then cancel the a's in the numerator and denominator. We must now eliminate the terms in parentheses so that the variable a is alone on the left side. Dividing both sides of the equation by the terms in parentheses, we can then cancel those terms in the numerator and denominator of the fraction on the left leaving A alone on the left side. As in the previous example, we can simplify the complex fraction on the right, since dividing the fraction B over 2 in the numerator by the terms in the denominator is the same as multiplying B over 2 by the reciprocal of those terms, which is 1 over those terms. Multiplying the numerators and denominators of the two fractions, we get B over two times the terms in parentheses. We have now solved the equation for A. Sometimes we may wish to solve for a variable which appears more than once in the equation. To end up with an equation with the variable N alone on the left side, we must somehow combine the two occurrences of N in this equation. We will start by moving all the terms which contain the variable n to one side of the equation. To do this, we subtract the term nz from both sides of the equation, allowing us to cancel the nz term on the right. All the terms containing n are now collected on the left. We would now like to collect the terms which do not contain n on the right. 
Subtracting the term RT from both sides of the equation allows us to eliminate the RT term on the left. Now all the terms which contain the variable N are on the left side of the equation and all the terms without N are on the right. The zero on the right can also be eliminated, leaving the term negative RT. To end up with the variable N alone on the left side, we must combine the Ns contained on the two terms on the left. This could be accomplished by placing the two terms in parentheses and then using the distributive property to bring the common factor N outside the parentheses. We must now eliminate the terms in parentheses on the left so that the variable N is alone. To do this, we divide both sides of the equation by the terms in parentheses and then cancel those terms in the numerator and denominator of the fraction on the left, leaving only the variable N on the left side. If we like, we can change the sign of the numerator and the fraction on the right to positive by multiplying the top and bottom of the fraction by negative 1. This flips the sign of the numerator and the signs of both terms in the denominator. The positions of the two terms in the denominator can then be swapped. Since the variable n is alone on the left side, we have solved this equation for n. In the last several lectures, we have studied linear equations and shown how they can be applied to some real-world applications. In the next lecture, we will show how to create linear equations which can solve various types of real-world problems.